Jakarta serves as the pulsating hub of Indonesia, accommodating a staggering 31 million inhabitants, constituting 11% of the nation's populace. It stands as the economic epicenter of Indonesia, housing the central government and claiming the title of the largest city in Southeast Asia. Nevertheless, Jakarta's rapid expansion has precipitated a plethora of challenges, some deeply rooted in its centuries-old history. Dating back to 1619, the Dutch East India Company. Indonesia's emerging urban center may not boast much yet, but it's poised to revolutionize the landscape. Spanning an area four times larger than Jakarta and a whopping 40 times the expanse of Manhattan, the initial phase of construction is underway, with four subsequent stages slated for completion by 2045. Despite its vast size, designed to accommodate less than 2 million residents, an impressive 65% of Nusantara's territory will be dedicated to lush greenery, comprising forests, gardens, and parks. An additional 10% will be allocated to agricultural endeavors, leaving a mere quarter of the cityscape for urban development. This ambitious initiative aligns with Indonesia's commitment to achieving carbon neutrality by 2060, with Nusantara playing a pivotal role. The city will rely exclusively on renewable energy sources, with 80% of local travel facilitated by public transportation, walking or cycling. Leveraging an innovative public transit system, residents are promised access to essential amenities like shops and restaurants within a 10-minute radius, regardless of their residential location. Enhanced by urban rainforests that intertwine throughout the city, Nusantara promises an ambience reminiscent of something out of Avatar transcending the ordinary. With such visionary plans in motion, the prospect of residing here appears rather enticing. Design architecture so, what's the vision behind this new capital? Out of 300 submissions from various companies, the Indonesian architecture and design firm, Urban, emerged as the chosen entity to craft the city's predominant layout, their vision, to forge a city harmonizing with, rather than opposing, its natural surroundings a smart urban landscape encapsulating Indonesia's biodiversity and cultural legacy. Named after the archipelago it represents, Nusantara, the city embodies the essence of the island nation. Let's delve into some design specifics. Elevated walkways will link transport hubs, facilitating access to the fully electric public transit system while navigating the undulating jungle terrain. These walkways, alongside elevated buildings, enhance airflow and facilitate rainwater dispersion throughout the urban landscape. Although the concept of raising buildings on stilts may seem intricate, it's a common practice in Indonesia, where many homes are elevated to thwart flooding. This technique is echoed in Nusantara's design ethos. At the city's core stands the Presidential Palace, a distinctive edifice fashioned in the likeness of Garuda, a mythical bird emblematic of Indonesia. Bali also boasts a colossal statue of this avian figure, featured in our previous video on the world's tallest statues. Symbolizing knowledge, power, and bravery, the palace's grand glass wingspan spans an impressive 177 meters, a prominent feature along the city's central thoroughfare. Several challenges loom over the development of Nuzentara. Firstly, the region has been plagued by rampant illegal mining activities. East Kalimantan boasts vast reserves of valuable resources such as coal, oil, nickel, but and gold. Environment and Forestry Minister Sidi Nurbaya Bakar's surveys reveal approximately 2,400 abandoned mines within the Nusantara vicinity alone. To facilitate construction, these excavations require filling, a task primarily shouldered by mining companies, but yet increasingly subsidized by the government. Secondly, financing poses a significant hurdle. While 20% of the $33 billion budget stems from Indonesian state coffers, the remaining 80% hinges on domestic and foreign investments, a venture fraught with difficulty. A major setback occurred in 2022 when a prominent Japanese investor withdrew due to irreconcilable investment terms. Despite Indonesia's enticements such as tax incentives and land rights, substantial investment commitments remain elusive. By December 2023, 
the government had received letters of intent from 323 investors, predominantly Asian. Australia has formally pledged a modest investment and offered expert technicians to aid in development. Thirdly, domestic critics decry the rushed parliamentary approval process, alleging President Widodo's eagerness to inaugurate the city before his term concludes.